we finally got to the States on CW. Yeah, really excited. Hello, fellow hams. I'm a VK2AOE, aka the Lunatic Painter, and in today's episode, we're going to look at a portable antenna for 40 meters, the 7 megahertz band. Because what I want to do is I want to take my gear, my QRP gear, my OzQRP 40 meter rig, out into the field, do a bit of kayak camping. And this is the kayak we're going to take. Kayak camping and portable operating. And that is the Thai word Seripap, which means freedom. And see if we can nab some stations out in the Australian bush. Well, that's a shame because I did want to buy from an Australian site and the 10 meter and the nine meter poles are all sold out. So we're gonna to have to uh, try another avenue. We've got 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 and 13 metre telescopic fishing rods, carbon fibre. And they're listed at a price of 40, 44 to 67, 94. So I'm going to jump in and, and, and order one of these. And the order total, including delivery, is 67.99. So 68 bucks. <laughs> one more time! One time! I love to get you on a slow boat to China All to myself alone Get you to keep you in my arms evermore Leave all your lovers weeping on a faraway shore Now we've dug out the old antenna and I can remember when I was making this, uh, this choke, um, it got humongous and I have a sneaking suspicion that I was having issues with my 49 to 1 unarmed because I had a very low power soldering iron. I don't think I made good connections and I don't think this choke is actually the correct value anyway, but at any rate, hanging that off a squid pole is probably not the smartest thing to do. So I will hold on to it because if I ever get in a situation where I can string it, uh, an antenna up in a tree, it's probably not as much of an issue. But what I am going to do is, uh, to start with at least, um, I may play around with trying to utilize this as some form of uh, loading coil um, and not having it at the end of the antenna, having it at uh, the beginning. For the sake of efficiency of my antenna, the plan is to first try and get a 40 meter antenna working. And the other thing is, working at home, you know, PVC, homemade uh, insulators, the antenna, they do the job. When I was on the mini kit site, I couldn't help myself. I saw these lovely little uh, egg insulators. They're just plastic and they're not porcelain. They'll certainly be a lot more compact and they will do the job. Uh, so I will be utilizing those um, using what I've got uh, wire wise and um, we will try and get up a, an end fed half wave with a 49 to 1 unun that I've already got. Actually, I'll show you the 49 to 1 unun. So that's our 49 to 1 unun that was QRP. So now we've got one up on the, on the inverted V end fed, 100 watts, or more than 100 watts. It'll probably take a couple hundred watts. So this uh, unun is 49 to 1. It's for an end fed half wave, but it's, it's probably good for up to 20, 25 watts. I wouldn't go any higher than that with this thing. And I also did a video on this as well. A link below. Okay, without further ado, let's do a uh, quick and dirty unboxing. It comes with a little bit of paraphernalia. I don't even know what that is. Some sort of, you know, thing that attaches on the end, I'm assuming. Because um, it is, after all, a fishing pole. Jeez, it comes with hooks. <laughs> um, so yeah, obviously they don't know that... Uh, it's going to be used for an antenna, but that's all right. So lots of um, 
lots of different little hooks and flies and everything else in it. It's very generous of them. And hey, if I'm ever in a survival situation and I need um, need some uh, food on the go, and there you go, even some fishing line. And that could come in handy holding up antennas and whatnot, though I'm probably gonna use a bit of paracord or something because that'll tangle in no time flat. Nothing like some accessories, even a little float here. So good on them for providing all that stuff. Using these really narrow sections for the top is not necessarily a clever thing to do because the antenna is usually quite heavy and even though it might get you that little bit higher, because it bends over, you're not really getting any 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 um, greater height for the for the squid pole. So it's not probably the smartest thing to do. Let's get this up in the air and see how uh, high it goes. Well, that is our squid pole. Well, that half wavelength antenna, because it had such a big loading coil on it, was quite a bit shorter than uh, the uh, required 66 feet for 7 megs half wavelength. So we've had to add a little bit of wire. Ideally, you would just go and you'd measure this, get it all adjusted, and then cut your length again from a clean piece of, you know, a single piece of wire but uh, you know I'm not that OCD about it so we'll get this soldered and taped off then we'll set it all up and get it on the nano VNA and see how what adjustments we need to make so now we've got approximately 10 meters either side um, on each leg of this inverted V so I've decided to do an inverted V configuration so that's our anun 49 to 1 and that's our squid pole we bought ourselves a nasty little bungee cord which isn't too springy thankfully it's made really badly so it's not going to take my eye out and then if we come over here through our dead vegetable garden you can see I've been sliding this up and down to get the SWR where I want it. And I'll now tie that down. So I'll give myself a bit of adjustment if I ever want to play around in the phone portion, I can uh, I can do that as well. Well, the phone portion's higher, so it may be shorter. So anyway, it gives me, gives me room to play for uh, SWR adjustments. And uh, I don't think I'll be taking a uh, an ATU in the field. I'll probably take the Nano VNA with me just for the first few trips to see how the, the antenna behaves or whether I end up with a stupidly high SWR. But uh, one of the benefits of taking a rig that I can change the finals in is, you know, worst case scenario, I'll blow it up and uh, I just replace it. It's only an IRF 510, cheap as chips. And that's our Nano VNA result. We were aiming to get it close to the center of the uh, CW portion of the band and if we go down to uh, 7 megs, we're still at 1.56 to 1. And as we climb up through the uh, the CW portion, we're still um, below 2 for SWR, which uh, in my books is a win. It's our VK3 TBR. So this is the setup, OzQRP 5 watt QRP transmitter, and as you just heard, we got ourselves into South Australia with this, 5 watts of CW, 
That's the brilliance of CW. That is my beautiful high mount key. Used, purchased off the internet. I think I paid $150 for this key and I absolutely love it. And um, you know, it's been a game changer for me. Nice heavy base, HK703. So the HK703 high mount. I've also got a marble base one that I use on my other rig. It's getting up to about four watts. No, the SWR is 1.5 is to 1 at 7017 kilohertz. So I'm very happy with my portable antenna setup. I'm not happy that nobody answered me. Maybe next time. Happy days. I didn't get anyone on my um, portable antenna, but uh, while I was editing this video, I heard a, a station in the States calling San Diego. Jim, listen to how fast he's sending. calling San Diego, Jim in San Diego. Um, you heard him there, He's, he absolutely smoked me with uh, the CW speed, uh, very practiced hand. But managed to get most of what he was sending me and from what I could tell, one kilowatt of power. Um, he's really cranking um, the power. I, of course, gave him a five by nine. He also gave me a five nine nine, even though I'm running probably four and a half to five watts. And he said, he no problem at all, fine business, got the whole lot. So um, I have finally gotten a DX CW. Now, I don't count New Zealand, even though New Zealand's DX, it's, yeah, it's across the ditch. It's as far as, you know, talking to someone in Tasmania, basically. So I finally got to the States on CW, really excited. Um, so I thought I'd share this. Thank you for sticking around to the very end of the video. We now have our antenna complete. Now it's quite obvious that uh, this is not the sort of thing you're going to stick in a backpack and take soda to summits of the air. Uh, you're not going to track up a mountain with this, it's quite, quite hefty. But that's an opportunity for another project. You can never have too many antennas, you can never, never have too many projects. And that's why I do this hobby, I like to make stuff and I like to take you along and you can see my bumbling efforts. So, this squid pole, uh, the Chinese made one, time will tell just how reliable this pole is. Now I did notice on the Haverford pole that at each section where each section slides through there is a metal sleeve and I was thinking well you know carbon fibers are really strong we all know carbon fibers are really strong material stronger than steel but um, my small amount of engineering experience teaching HSC engineering studies and the last two years of uh, engineering I haven't done that much in materials in the engineering degree up, up, to, up till now and might not be doing any because We've almost given up on the degree. Anyway, that's another story. We'll do that in another video. But um, the thing about metal is, metal is elastic. So your carbon fiber is very stiff and it's very strong, but it can be, in a sense, more brittle. So we may have uh, problems with breakages happening at those intersections. Uh, I will have to wait and see how this material handles uh, compared to the other, the other pole time will tell. If you've liked this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Click on the, uh, the like button below and leave me a comment. Let me know maybe what other projects you'd like to see in the future. Thank you for watching. I'm a VK2 AOE. This is the Art of Engineering and I will see you in the next video. 7-3.